Joel Toff for Nephrology Times. I'm here with uh, Dr. Little. Dr. Little is going to be giving the state-of-the-art lecture at the plenary session tomorrow at ASN on Saturday at the ASN Kidney Week. Dr. Little, welcome. Thank you very much. Why, for why don't you introduce me. yourself a little bit? So I'm a scientist, uh, mm -hmm. a stem cell biologist with a long interest in kidney development, and we use that knowledge of kidney development to actually be able to take stem cells from humans, yep. from patients even, and actually recreate kidney tissue and we recreating nephrons in the dish and asking how we can use those to model human kidney diseases. So why would you want to take a patient's stem cells to make a model? What's, what's the idea there? I think for a long time we have had not great models mm -hmm. of patients and of human tissue because we can take primary cell lines and we can grow them on plastic but they don't behave as they would inside a tissue in three dimensions. They're not hanging on to their friends in the right way, particularly things like protocytes that like interdigitated foot processes yeah, with slip yeah. diaphragms. So it's really hard to model those when you pull them out of the tissue and you put them on hard plastic, but we yep. can actually make a tissue where the glomeruli form in three dimensions mm -hmm. and they have a Bowman space with parietal epithelial cells and protocytes patterning and making GBM. So that's actually a much better model and that gives us a really accurate model of that patient and that patient's condition. And so, okay, so you have a model of the patient's condition in a dish or on whatever mm -hmm. medium that you're doing and what, what, are you, what are you doing with that then? Well, we, I mean, actually getting that to happen has is, is been quite, I quite remarkable. I, I, I bet but, that's not easy to get but, that. So that's pretty wild that you could do and, that. But, you know, we're, we're now <clears> getting more and more confident that these are models that they're showing the pathology that mm -hmm. you expect in these patients. So now we're actually starting to scale up so we can make lots of these. We can start to screen compounds for new therapies for treating things such as uh, monogenic glomerular disease or tubular disease. And we're also using them as models of human cells to, to look for AAV trophism for gene therapy or mm -hmm. for base editing uh, and really trying to make some differences for, for kids with renal cancer that have, with renal disease that have really not had therapies. So, and, and really this is kind of the, the step into precision medicine instead it of is. a therapy for all patients, this is a therapy that would be specifically tested on these patients, their, yeah. their disease. Right. Yeah, and we're actually learning a lot about underlying mechanisms of disease, which is really quite hard to do in the patient itself. We're actually able to ask at a biochemical level what's going wrong, mm -hmm. what, and, and therefore actually be a bit more targeted about how we look for a therapy. Of course, the really big biggie is can you actually then make a whole organ, like can you make a functional organ and transplant it into a patient? And oh my gosh. That's actually a very long-term challenge because the kidney is such a complex tissue. Incredible. Has so, yeah. no, it's not just that it's got lots of different cells, it's got them really beautifully patterned and architecturally arranged so they function. So, mm -hmm. But still, uh, I think the temptation is there and we're making progress towards scaling up tissues that are patterning nephrons in so an appropriate way. Yesterday on our poster tour, we stopped by one of your uh, people in your lab that was working on proximal tubule yeah. cells. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's, it's, what, 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 so like we talked about the glomerulus, sounds like a lot of success, what's going on in the PT? So the proximal tubule is actually late to mature. So what we're starting with is a stem cell, so we're walking it through development. Mm -hmm. So that's great for early tissue, but the proximal tubule matures late. It's really postnatal that it gets all these amazing solute channels and you need all those solute channels, first of all, to do your secretion and reabsorption, yep. but also to be sensitive to toxins. Because a lot of nephrotoxicity is, right they there. take the toxin in through a cation channel or an anion channel, yep. and then they can't get rid of it. So right. unless we get those tubes really mature, they're not going to be good models for us to actually look for nephrotoxicity. And, and that's and the goal is to look for, is yeah, to, is it have yeah. a, a, a tool or a model that you can look for nephrotoxicity? Yes, that's right. And, and of course, ultimately, if you have a tube that is actually functional and you can get it into a microcassette where there's flow, then you may actually have a capacity to do secretion and reabsorption uh, with cells. Yeah, I mean, you know, that was that was so interesting. Is that you don't you just don't get normal development without flow. That that flow is essential for Eventually, the maturation development yeah. of the of these. I think it's quite remarkable how far you get patterned without flow. But ultimately, even an embryo has flow. Uh, as soon as you make those glomeruli, there's flow yeah. through the tubules, yeah. and so 
you know, we, we're really interested in the, in the clinical applications long term, but we're learning a lot about the biology as we go along. And so you got glomerulus, you got proximal tubule, mm -hmm. loop, DCT, cortical collecting duct, what, uh, are those we, all on, we've got on the menu? we got distal tubules, you also SLC got distal 12A1, tubule. SLC 12A3, loop of Henry's, Henley is very late. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, we're seeing uh, some early loop of Henley formation, but you've got to bring it all together with uh, an exit path for the urine. And uh -huh. from, a, from a tissue engineering point of view, that's going to be the big challenge. Oh, the whole thing sounds incredibly challenging. Amazing yeah, work. Amazing it's keeping work. Keeping us busy. Hey, thanks for talking with me. This has been great. I've been Thank Joel Toff for uh, Nephrology Times. Thanks Thank for you. Little. Cheers.